God, thanks God, thank God for this opportunity to stand before you all. I'm going to continue uh, in our series um, looking unto Jesus. I thank God for his faithfulness all these months. We are in October. I believe we started the series at the beginning of the year, and we've talked about a lot of things, but we're still, uh, I don't know if we've reached the midway point yet, um, but there's a lot to talk about Jesus, right? Amen? So um, if you'll go to the next slide, let me just kind of um, uh, kind of uh, anchor us to where we're at. We uh, spent the last few weeks talking about, or a couple of months actually, talking about Jesus and his uh, public ministry. We talked about um, his baptism and his early life. And then more recently, we were we have been talking about uh, the disciples and how they were called, their individual experiences, to the extent uh, it's written about in the Bible, and um, what, how that is applicable to us. I am, uh, since we've kind of covered that pretty well, I'm going to go into the next subtopic, and that is talking about the miracles of Jesus. Um, so, when you look at the Bible, um, one thing that is unavoidable when you study, whether it's the Old Testament or New Testament, is one way we understand who God is, is, is the way he revealed himself to uh, human beings through uh, miraculous acts. And... When I say miraculous acts, there is an important thing we have to understand. Uh, it seems obvious, but we live in this natural world, right? Yes? Okay. All right. So we are all governed by physical laws of nature. Yes? We're all subject to it. You know, if you jump up, the reason... Uh, maybe your vertical is 36 inches or whatever it is. And you can jump three feet high, but most of us, uh, not that high. But you can't go higher than that because of the laws of gravity. What goes up must come down. So that is the natural laws that we, uh, we live by. And when God pierced that curtain or this veil of the natural laws to reveal who he is to man... Miracles happened, right? And the people that were witnesses to those miracles understood, well, we are dealing with a different being here, right? So in the Old Testament, what are the miracles? That uh, Let's talk about the Israelites, right? They were, um, uh, they were in slavery in Egypt, and Moses came and did... You know, all the ten plagues, those were miracles. They left Egypt, and they came to the Red Sea. He extended his hand, uh, right? Imagine you go downtown, you go to the Oklahoma River, uh, extend, somebody extends their hand, and suddenly the river parts, and you walk on dry ground. You can clearly say that is not a natural act, right? Somebody had to intervene in the course of nature to bring that supernatural act uh, to fruition, right? So God, who exists from eternity to eternity, who transcends uh, the laws of nature, who in fact put in place the laws of nature, right, are not subject to these things. So sometimes he intervenes in the affairs of man to show him that what? He exists, right? That is the primary reason that God does miracles, is to show him, man that he exists, to reveal himself to him. And of course, uh, most of the time, almost all of the time, I can't think of any time that is not, a miracle is also solving a, a problem. Right? Uh, solving a situation that somebody was faced with, God had compassion on them, 
right, and intervene on their behalf just like the Israelites who were stuck before the Red Sea and the Egyptians were about to attack them. The only way is through. And so God intervened in the affairs of man and intervened and pierced through that veil that separates the natural from the supernatural and what? Parted the waters and it says it stood up as two walls on either side. So now if you are there at that time, in that moment, right, you believe something just happened. Yes? That Moses himself didn't actually push the waters back. Somebody intervened. So then you question, like, whoa, how did this happen? Right? And then you believe that there is this God because Moses witnessed to him, the person who, what? The agent, right? The agent who performed the act says, no, it's not me, it's actually God who did this. And he sang praises to him on the other side. Then people believe that God, who is the one who caused this miracle to happen, right? But then God said to our teacher children about these things, right? As they, you know, I don't want to go into all the Old Testament uh, stories, but we know now about all these things because they wrote it down. But even when they didn't, they were teaching their children. God, can you imagine the miracle that God did? We were standing in front of the Red Sea and Moses extended his hand and it water, waters parted. And if he hadn't done that, the Egyptians would have killed us, right? And they walked through bare ground and got to the other side. So God didn't God, everything God does is with a purpose. He did, they had a need, he solved the need, and he showed them who he is at that moment. Yes? So they believed in him in that moment. But the thing about human nature, or sinful human nature, is that you move forward in life, and you have other experiences that make you forget about the miracle that just happened, and then what? Unbelief comes into your heart again, right? And you stop believing in God, or maybe you believe that, yes, God exists, He did this good thing, but now, why are all these bad things happening to me? So maybe He's not a good God, right? And so in the Israelites' life, He showed Himself time and time again. Even when they rebelled against Him, He showed Himself time and time again that He is a good God by piercing through the natural laws of man to perform supernatural acts. Does that all make sense? Okay, so um, now uh, come fast forward to the time of Jesus. So I've got that up here. One of the primary things that Jesus, when we think about Jesus, what we think about are the miracles that he performed, right? And why did he do that? Why did he perform miracles? It's for the same reason, right? The primary reason is to show the people, to show us through the scriptures that were written, that he was God. Amen? That he was a supernatural being that came down and lived as a human, ordinary human being. In fact, I believe he lived as an ordinary human being uh, uh, and performed a supernatural act, uh, acts through his whole life to show that he was God. That he, didn't, he wasn't some rich person that, you know, was trying to deceive people. He was a regular person and he did extraordinary things. Amen? You all with me this morning? Yes. So, but there are 37 actual recorded miracles of Jesus. We believe there are many more, many, many more than that were written down because mainly because John says what? In the last chapter of his book, he said, he, there are many things that Jesus did that we didn't write that if we were to write it down, the whole world would not be able to contain the things that he did, right? So that gives us an idea, I know that's hyperbole, but it gives us an idea that there may have been many more miracles that for whatever reason 
all four Gospels did not write down. I don't know, again. The, but we know that there were 37 uh, miracles that were written about Jesus. But one thing I want to, before I talk about some of them, one, one thing I wanted to um, point out is his life started with a miracle. And his life on earth ended with a miracle, right? So the 37 miracles that he did, right, were acts performed after he entered into ministry. He was born of a virgin. That is a miracle that nobody had ever witnessed anything like that. But in fact, was prophesied about, right, thousands of years before that. And then he died and rose again from the dead, which is a miraculous act. Amen? You all with me? And he rose into heaven, ascended into heaven, right before their eyes, which is also another miracle. Because, like I said, what goes up must come down. But Jesus, he did not come back down, right? He transcended the laws of gravity to be taken up to heaven uh, before their very eyes. Now, could he... Why did, why did those miracles happen? Why was he born of a virgin? Could he just not have appeared uh, one fine morning and started doing all these 37 miracles? Or why did he ascend before their eyes and why did he not just, you know, just like uh, with uh, Elijah or like Philip in Samaria, right? He was caught up before their eyes and he showed up somewhere else. Why did Jesus not do that. It is for us that he did that, right? He lived a human life to experience the human experience, right? To blend the supernatural with the natural. To, so we can live in a supernatural way. Amen? That we can be an example to the natural around us of the supernatural powers of God. You all with me? That is why Jesus uh, came to the earth and left the earth that way. Um, this is the same thing that happens to us real quick in our life as well. We, we are naturally born in this world, right? We all were born of a woman, and that is the only way you can be born in this world, right? But Jesus is the only person that was born of a virgin, Right? The same way, when we are spiritually reborn, that is a miracle that happens that we don't think about. Right? What a miracle it is that we who are a sinner, who are dead in our trespasses, our spirit is dead and completely severed from God, as Pastor John Warrior was speaking about last week. Our spirit is made alive yet again and a connection is formed with God. And that miracle is the beginning, just like with Jesus, the beginning of our spiritual walk on the earth. Yes? Our end of the life in a spiritual way also happens the same way with Jesus. Is that when Christ comes back, whether we died physically, right? We will miraculously be transformed into a glorious spiritual body and be taken up the same way Jesus was. Amen? So our life models the same life that Jesus exhibited in human form. Starts with a miraculous spiritual birth and ends with a miraculous lifting up, resurrection and lifting up into heaven. So then shouldn't the life that we have in between also model the life that Jesus had a living and exhibiting and performing miracles. Yes? So the end and the beginning is similar. Shouldn't the middle be the same too? Right? So that is the question we have. Do we, have, do we see the supernatural in our natural? Okay. All right. Well, you ponder on that question. We'll come back to it. Um, next point is... Let's just looking at these 37 miracles. Uh, I'm going to just read um, 
there's so many verses you can read all of the gospels they can see all the miracles of Jesus um, but let's just read Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 to 25 and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those that were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. So this is just a summarization of what I was talking about earlier of Jesus performed miracles wherever he went. So now I just found all the list of miracles that he did that are recorded and you can split them into four type, types of miracles that he did. Okay, first one was the power over nature. That's why when he uh, rebuked the wind and the storms, the wind and the storms calmed down, right? That's why when he needed to pay his taxes, a fish brought a coin uh, in the mouth for the exact amount he needed for himself and his disciples, and he paid his taxes. You could argue maybe it was a random coincidence. Maybe the fish happened to be there uh, and the exact coin happened to be there. Right, sure, you can explain all that. But we believe that was a supernatural act. Yes? Um, he, the power over nature is why he was able to... Um, uh, another example of the drought of fishes, right? So when the... Apostles need, needed uh, to catch fish. He asked them to launch the net, and the, an overabundance of fish came into the net. We don't know if he created those fish at that moment, or all the fish in the Sea of Galilee came and jumped into their net. But either way, we know that nature obeys Jesus. Amen? Nature is obedient to Jesus, whether it's the wind and the seas, which are not living things, or living things like fish or animals, obey Jesus. Well, or whether trees, he cursed the fig tree and was dead in an instant, right? Whether it's wind and the seas or climate, it is under the authority and the power of the Almighty God. Amen? who is Jesus Christ, who is the creator of everything. He was showing, why, why did he do these miracles that showed his power over nature? He was showing the Israelites, the same God you read about in the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 1, that the God who created all things, I am that God. I spoke it into existence, so I can speak into existence these fish that you need today. Yes? So those two things that... Uh, that I spoke about earlier, to show the power of God, just like our pa Shuba pastor likes to say, the cross, right? Horizontal and vertical. The power of God is the vertical piece. And the horizontal is, they needed it. Right? So this is the reason the miracles happened, is to show the power of God and to fill the need that they had at that moment. Amen? You all with me? The second type of miracle are the power over demons. So we know the story about the man that was possessed with a legion with over 5,000 demons, or there were uh, demons that were just sitting, listening to him, could not contain uh, the presence of Jesus there, and they knew. There were times where it says that they knew he was Christ, and they declared and he told them to be quiet, right? The demons knew and trembled at who Jesus was. But he showed the Israelites and his disciples, right, that in his name, with his words, the demons have to obey. And the interesting thing you see is many of the sicknesses that they were struggling with were demonic, right? There was a dumb person, uh, there was a dumb and a blind person who seems unrelated, but he was possessed by a demon that caused him to have those 
physical ailments and Jesus cast him out and they were healed. When I say that, let me say one more thing. This is another example of the natural mingling with the supernatural, right? So demons possessing a natural person cause a natural person to have a sickness is the blending of the supernatural with the natural, right? But Jesus showed that he is the authority over all things natural and supernatural, right? Spiritual, whether it's evil or good, and he cast those demons out. They didn't have a discussion or debate with him. They went out immediately. Amen? He had power over the demons. The, the other type of miracle that he showed was uh, healing. Um, not all of the sicknesses are caused by demonic influences. There are a lot of them are natural. We can see uh, one example that I saw was there is a dumb man who couldn't speak. This was a different person who, than the, and the other one that was possessed. But Jesus put his hand on his lips uh, or on his tongue and his ears and he prayed for him. And immediately what says his string of his tongue was loosed. That means he had a physical deformity that prevented him from speaking. There was a, the blind man uh, that, was, um, uh, that was called out to him in Bethsaida that Jesus healed. There was the uh, blind man in Jericho that Jesus made mud and healed him, right? Uh, there was the woman with the issue of blood that touched him. She had that issue of blood for, what, I think 12 years, and sh she was healed. There was the man by the pool that uh, was, could not, it was 38 years he was in that situation, and he could not uh, be healed. And Jesus healed him with one word. So all these things show that Jesus has power over sickness. Amen? That's why it says, I believe in Mark, that this, it says specifically they had healed and it says it was a confirmation of the prophecy in Isaiah that what? For our sins, we are, uh, by his stripes, we are healed. He has borne our infirmities. Amen? So, what, through healing, God shows us his supernatural power. And through healing, he shows us that he cares for us. He heals us because he loves us and he cares for us. Many times it says that he was moved with compassion. And I've said this before, it's the Greek word splegnisomai, which means that his whole, the, the inside of his bowels were moved and stirred and he had compassion for the person that he was praying for. So God cares about us, that's why he heals us. Right? To show us his power, but also because he cares about us. And the last type of miracle that he performed was uh, resurrection. I can see three instances um, that were talked about. Um, one was the widow's son in Nain. Uh, the other was uh, the um, Lazarus. And was that a third one? Who is it? Jairus' daughter. That's right. So all of these three situations, Jesus went to the place to heal them. Amen? Oh, it says in Nain, he went to this place. It doesn't say that he did anything else there. I believe that he may have gone there so he could be there for that widow at that moment. Jesus is present with us when we need him, right? And he did that miracle. For Lazarus, he went to their house and went to the tomb and raised him up. For Jairus, he went to the house. He didn't say from where he was, but because the situation was dire, he went to the house. And not only to the outside of the house, he went to the inner room, put everybody out, and raised her. So he shows us those two same things. To show the power of God and to show that he cared for those people. Amen? This is why God performs miracles 
is to show those two things. Uh, the other thing that we can think about, I'm all about, about out of time, um, is I looked at the, all these 37 miracles and you can look at the names of the places where they were done. About nine of them, nine or ten of them, were done in Capernaum, which is quite a distance away from Nazareth where he grew up. He did, you know, he, we did his first miracle in Cana. Uh, there are some by, in, uh, in the Sea of Galilee. On the other side of Galilee, there's a couple in Decapolis, Perea, a couple in Perea, I believe. Um, uh, even all the way up near Tyre and Sidon, which is the Canaanite woman, all the way far north. Again, I believe he went that far north, maybe so he could heal that per, uh, per woman's daughter. I'm not sure, but, but one thing you see is um, he couldn't do many miracles in Nazareth. Do you know the reason why? Because they didn't believe. So um, time and time again, Jesus says, uh, if you believe, if you believe, right? He told Mary, if you be, uh, Martha, if you believe, you will see the glory of God, right? Through his miracles, you will see the miraculous power of God working, the supernatural power of God working in the natural if you believe in him. Amen? Because the people of his town did not believe in him, he couldn't do much there. What that tells me is, why don't we see miracles today in our lives, in, a, you know, in the way that we see in the first century, is that we're missing that component. I don't believe anything changed about God's supernatural abilities. I don't think anything changed about how he cares for us. Or how he feels about us. I do believe he still wants to perform miracles in our lives. To show his glory. To show that he cares for us. But what has changed is our belief in him. Amen. As a community. As a church. Uh, as individuals. The belief that we have about Jesus has, has changed. That is why. Um, he was not able to perform a lot of miracles in Nazareth. And in fact, it says that. Because why? Because he, became, he was too familiar. They had seen him grown up. Isn't, they said, isn't this Joseph and Mary's son? What do you mean he does miracles? What do you mean he's a Messiah? They couldn't believe him. So the question I have to ask us is, what, has Jesus become too familiar to us? That we have created this distance with us and God. Our needs are still great. We all have needs that we need God to answer our prayers. But, and there's a community around us that needs to witness the supernatural power of God in the natural. So that they can see there is a, such a God that exists. And we know that is one of the primary ways that people believed in Jesus is through his miracles. Right? Right? He didn't preach about miracles. One thing you can see. He never preached about miracles. He preached the gospel. But he performed miracles to confirm the word that he preached. If the word that we preach cannot be confirmed by miracles that are, can only be done by the supernatural power of God. How can people believe? How can we believe about ourselves? Right? Right? So that's what we have to ask ourselves. Do we still believe that God has the ability to perform supernatural acts in the middle of the natural? Amen? That's why, that's why I ask this question. What are your beliefs? Many times, um, well, I want to just read real quick. Um, Mark chapter 11. Verse 23. And I'll invite the worship team to come up, please. Um, verse 23 to 26. <clears throat> well, let's read verse... Well, let's read verse 20 to 26. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master... 
Behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. They were so shocked that it actually happened. As if they hadn't already seen miracles. Um, Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. He's saying, believe in God. Like God can do these things. Are you shocked that this was possible? Verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall receive them. So, um, did the power of these words change 2,000 years later? I don't believe so. What changed is our belief in this God, right? So there's a difference between this saving faith. Yes, we believe that Jesus died on the cross and he can save us from eternal damnation. But it's hard for us to believe in the day to day uh, that God can perform supernatural things. But when I say all of this, this does not mean that we ask for you know, everything we want and God just gives it to us, right? He's not a genie in a bottle. Absolutely not. But we have to have this balance where we can't not believe anything to believing for all the things that come to our mind, right? So what's the change? See, I believe God does miracles more freely when he wants to show people his power to a community of unbelievers, right? But when we come in the faith, he may not do miracles instantaneously. You might have to wait years to see him, witness him, and answer the prayer. But it doesn't change the fact that it might be a miracle nonetheless. The only thing that changed is time, right? The question is, will you believe in him no matter how long it takes that if you've committed something in prayer, that he will either answer your prayer or transform how you think about it? But really what we're asking is, do you believe in a good God? Amen? So if you want healing... Do you believe that God can heal you? Maybe it'll take five years. Or if he doesn't heal you, do you believe that he is a good God, that there was a reason he didn't heal you, right? So our belief in God, that's the thing you have to understand about belief. It's not, you're not believing in the outcome. So at some point, the, the miraculous things that we saw, right? that's why the Israelites kept falling back into unbelief. Right, The miraculous belief, the things that we saw, creates this certain amount of belief in God. That has to transform into spiritual maturity where we believe in God himself. Not in the things we ask for. Right? Does that make sense? So as we grow from children into adults, our relationship with our parents change. Right? My kids might get disappointed and get angry at me uh, because I didn't give them something. But I give them the things I think they should have, right? Sometimes I might want them to wait. But as we become adults, it becomes less transactional, right? Our relationship with God has to become less transactional. And it has to become founded on love and this faith in God. But what we have to understand, that still doesn't change the fact that he still does miracles in our lives today. Amen? Every day. And we see, we have, we've had wonderful miracles this year that we've been praying for for years. Uh, whether it's my job and uh, we, um, uh, with, with uh, healing or with kids' school, uh, Josiah, we were waiting to get him into the school and just was not happening. And one week before school started, they called and said somebody dropped out and he got in. It just seems like a small thing, but it was huge for us. And I believe that was a miracle. Amen? He could have given it to us two years ago, but then I wouldn't have realized it was a miracle at that time. Right? But 
we have to change how we think about God, how we believe in God. Do we believe in a good God that can still transcend the supernatural into the natural? To show us his glory and to show us that he still loves us and to show other people that he loves us, right? Um, one other last thing I'll say. Sorry, guys. One more thing I'll say is, um, see, Jesus did miracles through the power of the Spirit, right? And he did it in no other name but himself. Does that make sense? When we, when Jesus anointed the uh, disciples and the apostles to do miracles, what did he say? You're not doing things in your name. You're performing miracles in my name. So when we pray for somebody, we're not trying to force our abilities to cause something to happen. No, we're simply like a child trusting in Jesus. In your name, I believe this can happen. I believe that you can heal this person. When you put trust in your abilities, that belief diminishes. But when you believe that Jesus can do this, and you pray for somebody in Jesus' name, it can happen. Amen? Let us come back to a place where we believe that Jesus can still perform miracles in His name and transcend this natural with the supernatural. May His name be glorified.